world. In today's video, we are going to look at these three important sections of the BLE protocol stack. Also, make sure that you have checked part 1 where I have covered other layers of the stack along with some introductory concepts related to Bluetooth Low Energy. And the link will be in the description below, so do check that out first. Alright, let's fill the first box. First box is nothing but GAP and GAP stands for Generic Access Profile and as implied by its name, it provides access to the link layer operations. This includes defining the role of a BLE device, managing advertisements, connection establishment, and security. Basically, everything to do with how BLE devices form connections with each other. Now, one may ask, like, what is the meaning of profile in the context of GAP? So, Profile defines the usage of the protocol in a particular way in order to achieve a particular goal. And the goal in this case would be forming a connection between two BLE devices. Now for this, GAP defines strict roles for the devices and these roles provide specific requirement for the underlying controller. Now roles allow devices to either transmit data or receive data or do both. Thus, there are four roles possible. The first one being broadcaster. The broadcaster keeps on broadcasting its data. As simple as that. It keeps on sending advertising events. An example of that would be a BLE thermometer, which does periodic announcement of its identity and keeps on transmitting ambient temperature related data. The next is observer. The observer role is complementary or opposite of the broadcaster. A gap observer is a Bluetooth low energy device that constantly scans for nearby advertising devices. Thus, it can read the advertisement and scan the response packets from these devices, but it cannot establish further connections. That means it can simply observe the data. Next comes central. It listens for advertisements, but unlike an observer, it can interact with any station. It can initiate and start the connection process and thus is known as the master. It can connect with multiple peripherals, which brings us to the last role, which is peripheral. Peripheral is the one that advertises and once connected with central, it keeps on exchanging the data only with that particular central. It can still advertise, but cannot make connections to any other stations until the session with that particular central is concluded. Now let's have a quick look at how the connections are established between the central and the peripheral. Peripheral keeps on sending its advertisement, say every 20 milliseconds. The developer can decide how many times advertisement message should be sent along with its content. If the central wants to get the data from the peripheral, it sends something called as a connect indication message on the advertisement channel, wherein it gives its frequency hop sequence and the channel that the peripheral needs to tune to. Then a connection is formed where the peripheral tunes its receiver to the specified channel and starts listening. So that's the whole procedure. So these are the few things that you should know about GAP. Next, we have something called as GAT. Now GAT stands for Generic Attribute Profile. Just the way GAP is our access layer, GAT is concerned with data exchange in BLE. Thus, it is the topmost data layer of BLE. Now, without a connection, it is not possible to obviously have a bidirectional data transfer between two BLE devices, which means that the devices have already gone through the advertising process, which is governed by GAP. Now, GAT uses ATT protocol for transfer of data. ATT stands for Attributes Protocol. ATT is used to store something called as services, characteristics, and related data, which are called attributes, in a simple lookup table using 16-bit IDs for each entry. 
we'll quickly understand what services and characteristics are but right now just hang on so now let's take a look at the roles within gat so the peripheral is known as the gat server and it holds the att lookup data and definitions of services and characteristics the gat client sends requests to the server to access its data note that a ble device can act as a server and client at the same time now let's look at the three most frequently used terms in ble profiles which i have already covered in terms of gap what it is next is services and the third is characteristics so profile doesn't actually exist on the ble peripheral itself it is simply a predefined collection of services which allows us to fulfill a particular goal as i had explained for gap service is a collection of chunks of data called characteristics each service has something called as uuid or universally unique identifier which distinguishes itself from other services so uuid is basically like this unique label which allows you to access a particular service the uuid can be 16 bit for an officially adopted ble service or 128 bits long for custom services now what do we mean by predefined or officially adopted profile or services so these profile or services are predefined by bluetooth special interest group thus we can readily use them if what we desire is not on this list then we can create our own custom profile and services as well so that brings us to the last or the lowest level concept of gat which is characteristics so as i said they are the lowest level concept in gat transactions which encapsulates a single data point or value it can also hold an array of related data such as xyz values of a 3 axis accelerometer similar to services characteristics have a predefined 16 bit uuid or custom 128 bit uuid now one may wonder that why is there a need for this sort of hierarchical structure that is profile containing services services containing characteristics why do we need that so for that let's have a look at an analogy by the way those are russian dolls like a doll within a doll within a doll so let's consider a better example than this now as i'm a part time artist so let's consider an rt example So this paint box is like a profile the paint slots are services and these paint tubes are like characteristics which hold the actual color or paint or in other words our data so we can clearly see that this type of structure makes sense because it makes sure that everything is in a standard location you can easily locate any color that is required at a given time In other words the data is available in an organized structure which ensures ease of access basically this structure gives client a road map that allows it to easily find whatever it requires on the server let's take a look at a standard heart rate profile to understand the gat concepts that we just discussed in a better way so there is a gat client which is accessing the heart rate profile on the gat server the profile consists of two services which are heart rate service and device info service respectively the device info service further contains five characteristics that give information about the device and the heart rate service contains heart rate measurement characteristic and body sensor location characteristic so i hope now everything is much more clearer Now there are six types of operations associated with characteristics. First one being commands which are sent by the client to the server and they do not require a response. Example can be write command. Then comes requests. These are sent by the client to the server and they do require a response which brings us to responses which are obviously sent by the server in response to a request. next are notifications which are sent by server to client 
to let it know of a change in a particular characteristic value. Example could be temperature. Temperature can be the characteristic of interest. If the data of that changes in server, then it will notify the client of the changed value. Next is indication. Sent by the server to the client, similar to notification, but here the client sends an acknowledgement to the server, confirming that the indication was successfully received. Which brings us to the last operation, which is confirmations. As just discussed, these are sent by client to server and are nothing but acknowledgement packets sent back to the server to let it know that the client received an indication successfully. Now let's quickly summarize everything. So the first profile, that is GAP, doesn't care what protocol you use, what transport you choose, or anything else really. It just defines a set of rules up and down the BLE stack to make sure that everything runs smoothly. It's up to GAT, which is the sub-profile of GAP, to select a transport and protocol for storing and moving data. And GAT uses the ATT protocol. And ATT protocol finally relies on the error-free nature of the L2CAP protocol to do its work. And L2CAP is the gateway to the lower layer protocols and eventually to the physical radio itself. Finally, let us summarize the steps which are required for connection establishment and data exchange between a central and a peripheral. Firstly, the central scans for the peripherals that are advertising. Then it forms a connection with a particular peripheral. Then it discovers the services on that particular peripheral and then it discovers the characteristics on the services of interest. Eventually, it will read or write values to the characteristics of interest. And in the end, it will obviously disconnect after it has completed data transfer. So that's all about BLE, the basics that you will need to get started with some projects. Now, that's a whole lot of theory. But what about practical examples? Well, the good news is I have got you covered on that as well. Do check the playlist that I've added in the description below, which covers a project idea based on RN4020 BLE chip. There is a lot to this technology and there are many books, articles, videos and papers available on this subject. And you can find the ones that I referred in the description below. If you're curious to know more, then they will certainly be of great help. With that said, like and share the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye world.